Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome back. So uh, we're going to continue our lecture with energy beam micro machining. So today, uh, today's topic will be on energy beam micro machining, which are focus ion beam micro machining (FIB) and also laser beam micro machining (LBM). Okay. So uh, the next lecture will be on ligar and micro replication. And then we are done with the micro machining technology for this semester. So ion beam uh, application has been used in many process. So we already see the ion beam lithography previously. Uh, we can uh, we can perform also implantation, sputtering, and also deposition by using the ion beam. Okay. So, focus ion beam, or we call it FIB, is a technique uh, used particularly in the semiconductor industry, material science, and also in the biological field for site uh, specific analysis uh, for deposition and ablation of material. Ablation here, what we call as material removal. Okay. Uh, so, uh, FIB setup is a scientific instrument that uh, it is resemble the SEM uh, process. So sometimes it can uh, be used together, and then uh, uh, SEM usually used for focus beam uh, of electron to image the sample, uh, and FIB setup used for the focus beam of ion instead. So FIB can also be incorporated in a system where both electron and ion beam column used together. So this one it will allow some features to be uh, investigate, uh, investigated using uh, either of the either type of the beam, uh, whether it's electron or ion beam. So FIB also uh, should not be confused with the uh, electron uh, beam uh, lithography. Okay. So previously we already see the electron beam lithography, but FIB it is more uh, into material removal using the um, uh, into uh, using the ion uh, meaning ion uh, with ion. Okay. So for example, such as in the proton beam uh, writing. So these are generally quite different system where the material is uh, modified by other mechanism. FIB system use a finely focused beam of ion usually gallium. So if you can see from here the ion uh, source here. So uh, usually gallium uh, ion will be bombarded into the uh, guiding system here and then focus into the ion beam into the guiding mechanism and uh, into the substrate so uh, as in the diagram of the uh, on the left right now so the uh, gallium uh, as the primary ion beam hits the sample surface and then it will sputter uh, a small amount of material which leave the surface uh, as either secondary ion uh, of positive uh, ion Okay, the, the red one, the or negative or neutral atom uh, on the on this area. Okay, so the primary beam also produce secondary uh, electron. So if you can see the yellow one, uh, okay. So the uh, as the primary uh, beam rests on the uh, sample surface, the signal from the sputtering ion, uh, sputtered ion or secondary electron is collected to form an image. Okay, so that's how the FIB work. So here is the sample um, on the example on how the uh, FIB work and then what uh, how the final product will look like. Okay, so this is an example on the product used the FI uh, by uh, produced via the FIB process. So the surface texture uh, uh, for the product uh, produced via the FIB is will look like this one. So for example, this is a, a material that undergoes the micro milling process. So the side wall will have this um, uh, texture, okay, surface texture, uh, which is smoother compared to the one that is on the bottom. So this is the bottom uh, area. So it will look like like this one, okay. So this one is because of the ion uh, uh, that uh, bombard on the surface over here. So this one, since the ion is coming from the top, right? So then it will be 
will create the uh, the wave like this on the side wall. In microelectronics process, FIB uh, can be applied in the IC repair and modifications since uh, we know that uh, IC is very small, right? So FIB uh, able to be uh, used if you want to repair and do the modification on it. So it can also use for magnetic head trimming, um, sample uh, preparation for TEM. TEM is a tunneling electron microscopy. So the sample must be in uh, one atom size uh, of thickness for uh, for us to look into the uh, uh, into the microstructure. So of course uh, we need uh, a very uh, small uh, process and very small uh, sample for it to uh, to look into it. And the last one you can also use it for the SIMS, which is secondary ion mass spectrometry. Here are some video links you can refer to to look into the FIB for micromilling and also sample preparation for TEM test. The next process that we are looking into is laser beam micromachining. So laser, uh, which is the abbreviation for light amplification, amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, uh, where the laser light is collimated, coherent and monochromatic in properties. So the intensity of leather light is very high, which make it able to cut the metal, for example, the steel. So some example of the laser, uh, laser um, process is the yttrium aluminum garnet or, or YAG laser and uh, carbon dioxide laser. For laser beam application, uh, it can be used in the normal machining so that it can uh, be used for metal cutting, welding, and etc. So, in terms of the micro machining, it is all uh, used for micro drilling, micro milling, micro channel, micro cavity, and also micro surgery for biomedical applications. In terms for the laser beam machining, machining is usually uh, using the laser is mainly due to the thermal action okay so this is due to the thermal action from the laser uh, where rapid rise in the temperature uh, in the limited area will cause the irradiation of the substrate material for example if you focus the light um, like this one so uh, this for example this is the mass so this is the light from the laser so this area will be uh, machine okay so this is uh, based on the thermal uh, rapid rise in the, the temperature uh, by the uh, laser okay however laser has some issue for example because they involve the rise of temperature so there will be heat affected zone or has and then uh, there will be molten metal that resolidify in situ, meaning that after the process, there will be molten metal uh, left inside there that will solidify. And some um, uh, of the process will of the rapid heating and cooling will uh, cause the brittle uh, properties of the material. So after that, it can also change material properties and the performance. The heat affected zone um, on the product is usually related to the laser wavelength, laser pulse duration and also the material properties for example the thermal conductivity and also the specific heat of the material. So the higher the thermal conduction of the uh, during the laser process then uh, the greater uh, the area for the has. In order to reduce the hus uh, area, so uh, you can use laser with shorter pulse and also uh, wavelength. So by using this, it will reduce the transfer of heat out of the ablation zone and also it tends to localize the heat and reduce the extent of the hus. So the next um, problem uh, or issue with the laser process is uh, there will be particulates of the substrate material if the ablation is uh, too deep and then there will be oxide and nitrites uh, layer also on the work material and other contaminants and product created by the interaction. So if we look into the uh, solution for the has previously, uh, one of the methods will be using short pass uh, for the micro machining process. So <coughs> Uh, 
uh, what is short pulse laser? It is a laser that capable of generating the light pulse that is last only a few micro or nano or femtoseconds. So, um, in terms of that, there are three types of um, a short pulse laser for micro machining. There are excimer laser, nanosecond laser, and femtosecond laser. Now let us look into the excimer laser. Excimer laser is a, a laser process where uh, the light is ultraviolet uh, laser and then it removes material without heating process. So it is a sophisticated and versatile method where the project, the uh, image of the mask on the material to remove selective uh, material. So by applying this technique, a pseudo 3D uh, structure could be produced. So the example of the product you can see in uh, the picture below. So you can uh, create a straight line, you can create the uh, like like an angle, okay, angle structure like the one in the second and third picture. But excimer laser mostly use, uh, used for micro machining of the organic material, plastic and polymer. So uh, below is the example of the product uh, use uh, machine using the excimer laser. Uh, for example, the first one is converging nozzle and the second one is polymer test structure. The advantage of short pulse laser is um, the process is so rapid that there is no uh, very little time for heat to diffuse away from the, the focal spot. So it directly changes solid matter into plasma. Okay. So due to that, there will be no has micro crack, no shock wave, a shock wave or delamination, no cut recast layer, and also no damage to the adjacent structure. Now let us look into the uh, long pulse laser and the short pulse laser. So the normal long pulse laser, when uh, there are uh, a long uh, time of um, penetration for the uh, laser beam, what happen is there will be possibility of the heat affected zone and then they also will create the micro crack and also shock wave to the substrate. So if the uh, short uh, pulse laser is used if you can see here only a small uh, time uh, material being exposed by the uh, laser light okay the ultra, uh, the laser beam so when it uh, it's only a very small um, time uh, exposure so that the there'll be a very little damage happen on the surface of the substrate so laser with a very short uh, pulse will uh, be able to be to perform the micro machining with high accuracy and resolution. So the micro, micro machining quality will depend on the amount of the heat deposit to the workpiece and also the amount of the heat that is left behind in the material which uh, can cause the damage. So if the ultra short laser is used, the laser energy does not have time to leak away from the micro machining spot right so then huge amount of energy energy deposit so fast that the material is forced into the state of plasma uh, then expand away from the material <coughs> and taking away almost all the heat and not leaving any heat in the substrate okay so they, due to that very low damage uh, will happen on the surface of the machine part Okay, so the interaction of the ultra short laser pulse with matter is highly reproducible, short after short. Here is the example of the uh, nanosecond laser uh, that produced a 25 micrometer wide micro channel. And if we put uh, the process uh, side by side to the micro channel with femtosecond laser, you can see the difference. So this is the, the one produced by the micro channel uh, using the femtosecond laser and this one is using the nanosecond laser. So if you can see the surface there, there are harsh area, there are delaminations and some uh, error on the surface, right? So if you produce the um, one using the femtosecond laser, it is a clean uh, cutting on the surface. Here is another uh, sample.
on the holes and also the channel uh, produced via the uh, nanosecond laser and also femtosecond laser you can see um, the difference okay so since the uh, the the surface if you can see it is smoother and also uh, compared to the um, nanosecond laser you will see this area where there are delamination and uh, some uh, debris also in the channel compared to the one that uh, produced via the femtosecond laser which is uh, much cleaner and the surface also much better there are some video links that you can refer to to look into the process so that's the end for the class today see you in the next class